while American Eagle gets, gets set up. Eagle.com. I'm joined today by Rob Sanders. He is uh, the develop, business development for our sectivity team. And then I have Tim Alanius as well. He's the director of customer experience. <coughs> and uh, they will be fielding most of your questions. I can tell you that right now. Because I, I know what you're thinking. Why am I doing this? But uh, I've been with American Eagle for about three years, and the reason why I'm getting so much grief, and the reason why I'm probably up here, if you look at number three, I'm uh, actually a season ticket holder after a 21-year wait on the Green Bay with the Green Bay Packers, and um, I couldn't put one of my boys with there up there without putting the other two. But I want to assure you right now, this is cream soda, and it's not an MGD, uh, especially since we're videotaping this. Um, but uh, yeah, so. I'm very passionate about the Packers. Um, it's funny because I, I get more grief when I go to work here wearing a jersey than I ever did when I commuted downtown. But I am with AmericanEagle.com, and we're a, a website development and hosting agency. Uh, we've been around since 1994. This is our building right off of 2E and 294, if you've ever seen it. That is not our skyline, though. Um, <laughs> we have about 300 employees, a little over, and we have offices throughout the country. And we're one of the top tier partners with Cyfinity, and we've really enjoyed the partnership uh, that we've built with them. So, <coughs> the Green Bay Packers came to us, and they were looking for a mobile site that would kind of mirror what their, their desktop site was. What they were seeing is that their, their mobile traffic was increasing more and more, the desktop was, was not, and their, their site on the mobile uh, devices just wasn't there. It just wasn't where they wanted it to be. So they wanted us to create a mobile experience that would have all the content, but really tailored to the needs of the mobile fans and pull the content from a lot of different sources, including the NFL CMS, in a real-time manner. So some of the things that you're gonna hear me talking about today might be repetitive, but it's very important to the, the success of this site. Because at the end of the day, we had to bring the technology in, integrate with a lot of different partners and a lot of different technologies to get the, the site that the Green Bay Packers wanted. So one of the big questions that we get, and when I was asking for help from uh, my team on, you know, what's the best way to position this, we started asking questions, why we did what we did and how we did it. And the first question, of course, that popped up was why we chose Safefinity. And obviously, as you can read right there, it was an ideal balance between the extensibility and the ease of use. Uh, it let us focus on the, on the mobile specifically. As uh, we talked, we learned earlier today, it comes with the responsive design. That was one of the big components. And it was just a clear winner because of the ease of integration, the total cost of ownership, the core CMS functionality, which was a big deal, because at the end of the day, the Packers did want to be able to control their site. They wanted to be able to do with it what they wanted to. And as you know, in, in any NFL team, up to and including the Chicago Bears, um, there's a lot of things that go on during the, the season itself and during the draft. So they wanted to keep things up to date and just the connectivity to the marketing systems. So some of the challenges that we faced going in is what we were looking at was, and when we started peeling the onion with the Green Bay Packers and what they wanted, is they wanted a, a, a existing mobile site that could they show all the data they wanted but were really catered to the tablet and the mobile phone users out there. They wanted it to be as exciting and with the same content as the, as the desktop version, but for it to be responsive. And then again, you can see the, that bottom uh, uh, statement, they wanted to take the robust functionality. So that was key. And for those of you who don't know, um, with the NFL teams, on their desktop sites, those are all tackled by, no pun intended, by the NFL. Um, they, they don't go to outside sources, they're all done uh, in the, uh, by the NFL itself. That's why you see that a lot of them looking alike. So for them to even, the Green Bay Packers to even look at this was uh, thinking out of the box. And if you guys want to jump in at any time. Yeah, the, the main reason that they wanted to go outside the box is because the NFL had no mobile solution for the teams at this time. The desktops, they're locked in, and they can't even go to a responsive framework because it's all based on the NFL CMS that's in place. So uh, in order to serve their fans, which admittedly is a very large
large portion of fans, the mobile usage spike and everything that we've seen in analytics is tremendous. They wanted to go to their fan base and not worry about what the NFL said, mm -hmm. so to say. And because of the flexibility of Sitefinity and, and building that response to Valve, that's where Sitefinity was an easy choice for them as the platform to build into and then continue driving that experience into other areas as well. So, thanks, Tim. So one of the questions that was asked was, how was Sitefinity used? I mean, was it extended? Was it just out of the box? And it was, it was quite, as you can read here, ordinarily I would put this in bullet points going down one by one, but because of time constraints, I put it all here. So the point that I want to drive home on this one is the personalization that's needed. And the personalization changes day by day and, and on many different facets. It could change on the Packer side from who's eligible to play, injuries, um, weather conditions, to the NFL, updating scores, updating transactions, updating so many components that you know that happen during the course of an NFL season that the personalization, you, when you talk about it being a, a constant flow, I mean, I can't think of a much much more better definition of that than an NFL site or any professional sports site at the height of the season or at the height of the draft. And the question comes up, how do we integrate and how did we integrate it on the third-party systems? We, uh, of course, we did on the, the CMS that the NFL uses, the HP. We did uh, things with the Google Double Click, Akamai, Lime Life, and CDN. We also had the live, live strat, uh, stat feeds, as well as the Packer Fund uh, Club Locator, which is actually the bar locator. So anywhere in the country, it has the feature that um, you type in your zip code, and you can find we, you can go and have a, a cold one with like-minded individuals without the fear of oppression. Right? <laughs> and then also just a, a stateless amateur at Adobe Marketing Cloud. So some of the add-ons that we used, the biggest one was the, the uh, load balancing. We used a professional license on this one. Um, as we go on with ongoing strategic services with the, the Green Bay Packers and we look towards phase two, some of the things that we're looking at is the online marketing edition as well as the uh, experience cloud. So the one thing about the load balancing that's, that's very important, um, it, you know, the horror story is when they start winning, you know, the fans start knocking out the, uh, the website because of the use and the, the flow of traffic. So we're very cognizant of that, and we took uh, specific actions to, to make sure that the site wasn't only up, but it was responsive as well. So that's important as well. Cause Everybody's been in, this, in an instance where you're either in the store, you're trying to monitor something, and your, your, your device is, at, is one step faster than writing by hand because you're waiting for the returns. Some of the other highlights of the, this, uh, this solution was it got tested. I'm going to let Rob talk a little bit about how we did some of our testing here, but we got it during the playoff run. Um, so you had that first instance of what was going to happen, how do you test for that. We went back, we've had experience with NFL teams in the Super Bowl. We have experience with customers that ran Super Bowl ads. So we, we knew that going in, um, but wanted to make sure that everything was, <coughs> pardon me, I get a little emotional when I talk about that. Um, <laughs> that everything was good to go. Um, we optimized, of course, for the mobile devices, you know, um, the tablets, the, the, the mobile phones, everything was good to go. Tested it time and time again using the feature on the CMS so you can kind of take a look at what it's going to, uh, as a preview without having to toggle back and forth. And then the endless scroll. And I'm going to touch on uh, the lazy loader uh, in a little bit, but what you wanted to do because of the amount of data that kept pouring in at all times, you didn't want to have the user experience go in, you know, um, literally like a mile down um, on their phone or device and then having a hard time trying to get back to the top as well. So there was a lot of things that were going on there. Um, we did the custom modules for the, the player stats, did the custom modules for the schedules, did the custom modules for the games, so on and so forth. And just one quick okay. note there, on the schedules, that's one of the largest spikes we saw is when the 2015-2016 schedule came out and why the importance of this mobile site and its, its existence really was because almost, I think it was close to, 75%, if not more, of their traffic 
to the schedule page was from mobile devices. So everyone knew that the schedule was coming out, uh, same with draft day and everything. Everyone's on their phones checking. So that's why the importance of the site for the Packers was huge and that load balancing, that delivery time and, and page speed exactly. is, is a focus to you know, just make sure that they have their fan base who will go out and complain about a site because that's the Green Bay Packer fan base. And <coughs> I'll stop. The fact that we made it to the postseason. No. I'm sorry. It gave me, you know, I'm like a better child. <laughs> Some of the technical highlights. Again, we use Akamai, and we use uh, custom scripts. So, our, like again, um, one of the the great things about what we're able to do is work closely with the Green Bay Packers and our technical team to come up with exactly what they're looking for. We listen to the customer and really gave them what they want. They knew what they were looking. For. Um, they just didn't know how to put it out there, and we helped. It was a great collaborative effort. Um, Rob was actually on the team. He helped spearhead it. He could talk to a lot of it, um, but it was a great experience. Just getting into the, what you just mentioned about the desktop site and the mobile site, we're talking about two different platforms, you know, the NFL and Sitefinity. So if you're actually, you know, if there's an email blast with a, a link that came from the desktop site, well, how is that data being served up? It's on that you gotta go and detect m.packers.com and that article had to come up as if it was on the desktop. So there's a lot of, of synchronization of uh, that data instantly because they published an article, the AP or whatever did, on packers.com, it instantly had to be available on that mobile site as well. So Rob, that was kind of a great segue into the, the slide where we talk about the lazy loader there. So that's exactly what they did. And what we ended up doing as a solution was just creating a schedule uh, of the tasks, the feeds, and with the pair with the logic. So it would be almost instantaneous, as Rob said, it would be seamless to the end user. That's really what we wanted. What we wanted for the end user was no difference of the, the desktop site versus the mobile site, with the exception of you're holding your mobile or tablet in your hand. Did I leave anything out there? a little bit in, in uh, uh, the earlier presentation was for analytics. So we had to do some custom code to accommodate that because with the constant feeds and the constant data, you wanted to make sure that the fresh, the fresh uh, uh, news, fresh articles, the, the latest and greatest stats were at the top. So that was important. And with the sponsorships as well, what they wanted to do with the sponsorships was, again, with the personalization, make sure that the right ads got to the right device at the right time. Yeah, the, the one thing to note on that custom virtual page tracking is because uh, NFL provides them with the Adobe marketing suite, so they're an amateur site catalyst, whichever one you're familiar with hearing it called. Uh, and the lazy load aspect of why we wanted to customize those virtual page views was we wanted to understand how far users on a mobile device were really scrolling through the new speed that could come in. That way we could actually start to optimize the site even further, even within a lazy load object to ensure that if we saw that the average number of mobile users were only going five lazy load virtual pages deep, we'd be able to then optimize the performance of the page without having to continuously keep adding that at certain times. So it, it came into play both from a page speed perspective and, and optimization, but also for their analytics to say, how deep do our end users really go? And what, kind of, what, what information are they most interested in? Are they scrolling down to a certain type of article? That's sort of the future, some of the services with DEC and the personas and adding in campaigns is really gonna be uh, a huge win for them in engaging with their fan base at an even more personal level. And then also um, on the, 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 the site itself, when you're talking about how far and what articles they read, they read there's also an Ask Vic, he's one of the bloggers on there too. So when you scroll down there, you'll see that with almost every article you're looking at on the right, on the left hand side, you'll, you'll see the opportunity to ask a question. You know, some of the challenges, again, um, to, to summarize this, this, uh, this slide, is just the nature of the NFL season in general. Um, 
the biggest challenge was making sure that not only was it up and responsive, but the the mobile site would mirror the uh, the uh, desktop site, making sure that for the customer that was there or the end user that was there, um, they were getting the information that they found relevant through personalization, and then also um, even if they were clicking off to the Packer Pro Shop, to to make sure that their their buying experience was was sound as well. Again, I touched on this a little bit about already, but it wasn't just the the player stats and, and things like that. It was also the the, the blog from, from Vic and also the find the bar. Um, it's, it's just a total experience that they, they get. So the, the, the Green Bay Packer fan base is spread throughout the, the, the world. And, the, and so they wanted a customizable so that, again, you can find the like-minded folks to, to go to have a, a cold one with. As a result of the, the launch of the, the website, uh, the visits were up 55% and the page clicks were up 37% um, from the prior year. Uh, the retention rate was 18%. Uh, the ROI that the, the Packers put in for the, uh, the mobile site, um, it looks like now we're on schedule to, to reach the ROI within 15 months of launch. And we're beginning to talk to them about the digital experience uh, cloud as well. And I don't know if you want to add anything to that about the, the results. The ROI is a combination of, of advertising sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So that's huge to them to get that exposure and you know, page views and optimized site allows them to keep serving up different ads from different sponsors and, and pay for that website essentially so they can reinvest. So that, that's really all I had. Um, I wanted to make sure that I, I hit the time slot and, and a lot of the questions that admittedly, mostly Rob and Tim are going to field. But uh, are there any questions concerning the, the website? I can talk about the Packers offline. But, uh. <laughs> hey, Alan, uh, did the, how did the, how do you redirect your customers to the mobile site for a mobile device? Did the NFL allow you to put a redirect in there? Yes, the NFL answers all the DNS and they, they routed everything for us. Okay. Yeah. Was the NFL cooperative in that effort? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's a whole uh, other story. I'm just curious. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Rick England has a, a long history with the NFL. We acquired uh, Sport Vision, um, the maker of the Yellow Line, yeah. back in 2002. Yeah. And we acquired probably 15 NFL teams at that time. So we had been working with a lot of NFL teams back then. You know, knew their structure and being, actually cooperated with them when they actually took all the sites in house over a period of two years, so about like five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was a difficult time for us to let go of them, but, you know, at the same time, they were very cooperative. Um, we had some great uh, contacts at the Packers to work with, mm -hmm. um, and they, they, really, they really set it up nice, and the NFL didn't really want anything to do with, with this mobile presence. They knew they had some inadequacies, and they, they wanted they wanted to drive more traffic and be a, a source as well. So uh, them allowing us to do this and giving us access to their API and store all this data, you know, was huge and key. And they, they gave us the time and resources That's on their side. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, and same on the analytics side. The yeah. Adobe Marketing Cloud is owned by the NFL and then distributed out to the team. So we had to work with NFL on that aspect of setting up all the custom tracking and events and virtual page views. So. That's good. It's not an easy project. No, no, no. There's a lot of these um, art didn't talk about the, the, the testing is huge for performance the tracking. So we we ran a lot of um, live games, you know, on a design platform separate from public view, telling all the playoff games, not just the Packers, but anybody that's playing the playoffs, we were able to get that feed essentially from the NFL, replace the IDs and actually run simu you know simulations of everything and then throw traffic at it and everything. So we made sure that was a big, that was a big presentation that, that should be available from Sitefinity soon. Uh, that was a teller advanced about Sitefinity performance and how to test for it and eliminating certain modules and really get down to nitty gritty on, you know, figuring out what a bottleneck might be. That's awesome. If, if I may add a comment here, uh, by collaborating on your history with NFL as well as on the performance thing and collaboration with us as the CMS vendor, uh, you did the website uh, for the Super Bowl at Black Stadium, right? And uh, since America
McIntyre wasn't really sure how much traffic that website is going to get at the time of the Super Bowl and the Patriots were playing and all these things going to happen on that very same day. And all the eyeballs were on that website, people checking with their mobile phones what's going on and so forth, uh, buying tickets and things like that. And I remember the site was launched on the weekend and you guys, they needed support from our technical support team to be on call so that we can make sure that if something doesn't go well, uh, things happen that we can support them and we had guys uh, stay the weekend so that they could have a cool one. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that, thankfully everything went well and I don't know what your experience after that has been. No, yeah, that's a great point. Our, our relationship with Snipefinity yeah. as a partner in these uh, you know, larger load balancing testing and, and critical site